How would you feel if you bragged about being a hacker, but actually got yourself hacked and had your private data published on the dark web? Well if you ask me, it wouldn't be so respectful, that's why in this video, we'll walk through some essential steps and strategies that you can take to digitally secure yourself from experienced hackers, and fortify your smartphone, your social media accounts, or your home network from getting hacked, so let's get started. Disclaimer. The threat model of this video focuses on a general user who faces threats from experienced hackers, but if you're someone who's important enough to be targeted by the government intelligence agencies or multi-million dollar entities, I would recommend stop watching YouTube videos and consulting a professional as it would require a dedicated attention to your specific situation. Stage number one, smartphones. Smartphones are an inseparable part of your life, and the first two things you should do to ensure they are secure, is set up a strong password on the lock screen, and turn Google's Find My Device on. Both of these steps are crucial as a lock screen will keep your data encrypted, while Google's Find My Device will help you in erasing your data even if a hacker steals your device and attempts to brute force your password. Next, set your updates to be downloaded and installed automatically, as 80% of smartphone hacks happen because of outdated software, and hackers share known software vulnerabilities on different hacking forums. If you're someone who likes having a bunch of apps on their phone, I would recommend removing the ones you don't actually need, and installing some useful ones like NetGuard for Android or Lockdown for iOS. Both of these apps are something called an application firewall, and just like any other firewall, they allow you to block or restrict Wi-Fi connection for certain apps that don't really need it, and only allow the ones that can't function without it. Blocking internet access disconnects an app from its servers, and stops the app from sending or receiving data if it has malicious features, or if has been compromised by hackers. Turning off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings when not in use is also a good habit, as they can leave your device vulnerable to several attacks, and facilitate hackers with a way to get in. If you have allowed your smartphone to automatically connect to an open Wi-Fi, disable it by opening the settings app on your phone, as anyone with a little technical knowledge can easily set up an open Wi-Fi network, and steal your private data by making your smartphone connect to it. In a situation where you must connect to a public Wi-Fi, do it while using a VPN, as they will provide a secure connection compared to transmitting your data openly. Never install apps from outside the Play Store, and remember that cracked or modified apps from unofficial sources always contain some type of malware or spyware. If you suspect that you're living with a paranoid stalker who might have installed a spyware on your phone, it is recommended to factory reset your phone and start fresh. Speaking of factory resetting your phone, you should always have a complete backup of your data on an encrypted hard drive, and shouldn't depend on cloud storages for backups, as they are an easy target for hackers to access. If you can't go through the hassle of backing up your data manually, and are used to services like Google Drive or iCloud, make sure the accounts your cloud backups are connected to are 100% secure, as weak online accounts linked to a smartphone pose a significant threat to digital security, and can make all of the steps we just went over useless. Stage number two, online accounts. To enhance the security of your online accounts, refrain from using the same password across all of them, as it could result in getting all of them hacked, if any one of them is compromised. You can also opt for a password manager like Bitwarden to generate and save unique passwords for each account, while making sure that your passwords are stored in an encrypted database. Applying this strategy is also recommended for email addresses, and some good email providers for this purpose are ProtonMail or Tutanota.com. Never use security questions as an option for password recovery, but on platforms where it's an absolute necessity to keep a security question, use your password manager to generate random phrases and save them as passwords. When browsing the internet, make it a habit to check the complete URL of any link before clicking on it, and if it's something you don't recognize as trustworthy, don't click on it. Use secure browsers like Brave and Bramite to block malicious JavaScripts from websites, and make sure that the websites you visit are secured by SSL or TLS encryption. Hardening privacy settings on your social media accounts is also crucial for digital security, as having your information open for anyone to see exposes you to open source intelligence, and can help hackers in coming with different ways to socially engineer you. Finally, the most generic but crucial advice is to enable two-factor authentication on all of your online accounts, and use open source tools like an OTP for Android, or free OTP for iOS, rather than relying on SMS base 2 FAs for a more secure approach. Stage number 3, Networks. Securing your home network is essential because if a hacker gains access to someone's network, they could potentially hack all the devices connected to that network, sniff the traffic going through the network, compromise online accounts, or even send death threats to the political leader of a country from that network's IP address. I won't be going over how you can secure your home network in this video, as I've prepared a free and quick step-by-step -step guide that you can follow by clicking on the link in the description down below. It's a beginner-friendly guide, and even if you're not the best friends with technology, you will be able to understand it and take your home network security to the next level. Anyway guys so this was it for the video, before ending, I would like to emphasize that while going through these steps will make you more difficult to hack, there is still no such thing as being 100% secure. Always remember that trust can be a weakness, and security is like group immunity, so the more people around you are secure, the lower your chances are of getting hacked and vice versa. If you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comment section down below and I will see you in the next one.